Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a quick video just talking about the so the um, files you've downloaded and how to use them, how to get them printing. So I'm going to show you two different softwares. Um, in fact, I'm going to this is Prusa, uh, Prusa Slicer. I'm going to show you a different one first because it's more of a generic software, and I'm going to show you you know how to get them printing uh, predictably. So first of all, when you download your files, it's going to be in a, um, a zipped folder. You'll want to unzip that. Um, in fact, here it is. It'll look something like this. Right click on it and go to extract all. It'll ask you where you want to put it. Just say okay usually and it'll put it right in that same folder. And so now you can come in here and you've got FDM files and resin files. I'm going to recommend if you have an option, if you have a friend, if you want to buy a printer, I mean it's funny to buy a printer just for this use, but an FDM printer can be really useful for a lot of um, toy tinkering around and whatnot, but also for, I do a lot of printing with mine. Um, it's going to be better for this. The resin files can work. It's just limited in what kind of resin. I'm, and at the time of recording this on uh, April 18th, 2020, um, there's uh, basically one resin we know of that will work with it, and that's the um, key, soft, uh, key splint soft material because you can heat mold it to a degree. So, um, but I'm just being honest, uh, resin printing is trickier with this. FDM is going to be easier. So I'm going to focus on that. Um, you can watch this video still if you're doing resin printing. It's going to print pretty much the same. Um, now, I guess I'll go ahead and make a, I'll, 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 I'll touch on that at the end. So first I'm going to use um, the FDM files and I'm going to print them um, on the Cura or set them up on the Cura software, which is, uh, it can be used with a lot of different printers. Um, in particular, the Creality printers, which I've recommended to people. Um, uh, simple, other, anyway, there's lots of printers that it can work with. Whereas the Prusa Slicer is really a Prusa software. So if you're using this software, you've got your, your files, and let's just say you want to print a large. I'm just going to grab it, and I'm going to drag and drop it. Okay, now this software, I find it to be, you know, I prefer the Prusa Slicer software, but it's, it's fine. So this this image is a representation of my Prusa uh, MK3 so, uh, printer, but you could have it on whatever printer um, you know you might be using. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, right now it's vertical. We want it to lay flat. Now if you look at an angle, don't worry about these red parts, um, This there's, sort, there's a trough, there's a depression on this side, and on this side the trough is, let me zoom in, is connected what I call these little perforations or bridges, okay? So the reason is, is when we form this, in my other videos, you'll see that we form them together to the face, and then we cut these to separate the two different components. This just keeps the two of them together so that when we print, uh, when we mold them, they mold uniformly and consistently, but um, we can then cut them apart. So my recommendation is to print this with this side down. Okay, you can try the other side. I honestly, I, I've done it once. Um, it's been a while and I've just basically given that up because your first layer tends to get a little bit smushed. And to account for that, I have actually added, if you look very carefully, it's kind of hard to tell, there's a bevel right here and a bevel on this side, okay? So the reason is, is that when you get that first layer gets smushed, it only smushes, hopefully, no more than the length of this bevel, which means you still end up with holes where you can separate the two components. It's very important, because otherwise, if it smushes together, well, you're in trouble. So, I'm going to lay it down flat, and for me to do it in this software, and I'm, I don't use this software much, but I wanted to make sure I could help you with it, click on the Rotate button, and now I'm going to click on this button. This is Select Face to Align to Build Plate. Okay, and now I'm going to click right on here. Oh, sorry. There you go. There you go. Snaps down. It always takes me two times. I don't know why the first one I'm not doing something right. But anyway, so now I click off of that. I can grab this and I can, um, well, I can rotate it if I need to. For instance, um, some prints, if I'm going to be doing a bunch of them, are easier to fit more of them if I go this direction. Okay? I can hit Control C to copy, hit Control V. Oh, sorry, actually it's not. Uh, right click here and say multiply selected model and say I want to put four on there. I'll say how many copies do I want? I want three more copies. It's going to try to uh, position all of them and it might struggle. It might say, well, you know what? It can't fit all of them in here. Quite often it's not, um, you can, 
the software is just not able to use its algorithm to necessarily move them uh, ideally. So I'm gonna click on that again, and I'm gonna click on uh, move, so that I can instead just grab it and move it around. And if it get, turns that color, then you know that it's not, it's slightly off the build platform. And when it's all yellow, you know you're good to go. And so we can really just kind of do this multiple times for all of these and position them however you want. Occasionally, it's actually helpful, and it's not necessary in this situation, we've got plenty of distance here, but sometimes it's actually, uh, with the extra large ones, it's helpful to have the points toward each other because essentially you can kind of fit in the nook. Again, not necessary with the size large, but um, just something to keep in mind if you're trying to arrange multiple of them. Um, let me get this out over here. But as you can see, they all fit quite easily on here, all four of them. Why the software wasn't able to automatically do that, I really couldn't tell you, but um, there we go. So they're all positioned and ready to go. A couple things I'm gonna recommend is that, as far as uh, layer height, people will ask, well, how, t how thick should each layer be? And I'm gonna say that um, I'm usually going with 0.3 layer thickness uh, because there's, there is no need to have very small steps. Those are all vertically ex extruded, so there are no like uh, sloped shoulders that require thinner, thinner layers. And the thicker the layer, the stronger it is gonna be anyways. So um, uh, yeah, I've been usually printing at 0.3 millimeters. A couple other things is I like to go with, um, on the shell, the shell is how many, um, it t talks about how the actual layer, each layer is printed. So one of the things I'm gonna look for, and I have to remember where it is, it's, it's, um, uh, it's perimeters basically. Um, where is that? Where is, oh good grief. Yeah, wall count, geez, yeah, wall count. I want four. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Um, I don't really worry about top layers, bottom layers, that's all fine. Infill, you can have it whatever you want because you'll see why it doesn't really matter. Um, you could put it at 100%. You could actually change this um, wall count to 12 if you like. It doesn't, it's kind of silly, but you can do that. Um, and then about that, I turn off the build plate adhesion off the skirt. The skirt is basically a single line that wraps all the way around it. And um, yeah, it's just, there's no use to it on these prints. I'll be honest, it's beyond me what the actual use is for it in general. I'm sure there is one, but I don't know, and it's certainly not needed here. So I'm all done here. I've, I've set up everything. The important things being get your wall count to at least four, layer heart of 0.3, and then um, that's, that's pretty much, oh yeah, uh, I turned off the skirt, okay? So let's go ahead and hit slice and see what we get for a result. Uh, it takes a, a few seconds and then it's gonna generate, it's gonna show us what each one of the layers would look like when it prints this. Um, so it's got one hour and 18 minutes. Let's close this, let's hit the preview button. I'm not a fan of the Cura preview, but here's what, it, when, I, when I talked about the 12 perimeter layers or walls, one, two, three, then there's a gap between one, two, three. It could only fit three, okay? Because this is an external wall, that's an external wall. This is an external wall, that's an external wall. As you can see, it's just three with one extra little extrusion between it. And so, you know, going to, um, or down here, better example, right in here, this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and an overlap. So truth be told, um, five would have been sufficient. Any more than that is just the software doesn't have the ability to do any more walls than that. But you can see it's a solid print. There is no infill. Zero infill, and I'm printing four of these in an hour and 18 minutes. Stick with that. This is gonna be the strongest it's gonna be. These are only two millimeters thick, so we'd like some strength, and it's not a lot of print time. So that's pretty much it. At this point, you're ready to go ahead and save the file, get it over to your printer, and start printing. So let me walk you through pretty quickly on the Prusa Slicer software. Um, if you're jumping in, if you fast forwarded, well, here we go. 
So um, go ahead and find the file. We're going to use the large. I'm going to drag and drop it in here. Once again, we're going to look for not the smooth side. We want to look for the trough side. The trough side needs to be up. So we're actually going to click on the other one. You can click right um, here, which is place on face, or I just like to hit the F button on my keyboard. Click here, and then it snaps it right down. Much easier to visualize in this software than it is Cura. If you, um, as I mentioned on the Cura software, uh, if, you, if you're just printing one of these, you're done. You can just slice it or set up your settings and slice it. If you want to print more of them, you might want to go ahead and rotate so that it's 90 degrees. And now you can come up here to the plus sign and go plus, plus, plus. Now I can just hit the a button on my computer on this software which is arranges them it's an auto arrangement and it tries to arrange and it actually got it in this version um, in this software it was able to arrange it and that's great um, so these are all ready to go ready to print a couple of the settings I've got a, a pre-programmed setting up here for what I like to use but let me walk you through what that looks like first of all I'm using the 0.6 nozzle, millimeter nozzle. You can use the more standard 0 0.4, that's fine. It's just going to take more, t a little more time. Not a ton more, but a little more. Uh, it's not completely a um, uh, linear relationship. Um, but uh, anyway, so we'll go with the, the 06. Infill, I'm leaving at 15. I just don't care because as I said in the, the previous portion, I'm going to address that by coming to print settings. Um, layers and perimeters, the very top one, that's where it should come up. It was just, I looked at the other ones earlier. And perimeters, I've got it set to four. Four is going to be enough with the, that wider nozzle, but if you have a thinner nozzle, you might want to go up. But like I said in the last one, you could bump it all the way up to 10, and it's just not going to matter. And um, other than that, I believe that's, oh yeah, yeah. Skirt and brim, and I turn off. Normally, there's one loop. I'm going to turn that off and say go back to platter and click slice. You can see the Prusa Slicer software is a bit faster at this and so now we can look at each individual layer just by, by clicking this. I turn off this button right here so I can look at each individual layer. If there was infill it would happen in here and here but because I bumped it up to 10 layers, um, uh, perimeter layers, it, this basically is the infill. And it's an hour and 36 print for these. And that's about it. Again, my default actually is going to be um, uh, four of the perimeter layers. So let's just take a look at what it what that looks like when you slice it. I'll have to re-slice it because it's going to have to refigure everything out. And you can see how there's these red layers, uh, different colors, and those are where the infill would be. Now, why... They are solid, even though I have my infill at 15%, because the first, the, the bottom few layers and the top few layers have to be fully solid anyways. The software requires that because that's sort of what, what we talk about is the shell right here where it says um, solid layers, four on top, four on bottom. And since there's only um, seven layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven layers, I went fast. So there's seven total layers, which means there are no layers that require infill, which is great. That's another reason I go with the o, the um, three millimeter layer height. Uh, so there we go. I'm ready to hit export code and get this printing. So again, they're super simple. The key points are to, um, I, I have no problem. First of all is to have the trough up. And as far as printing, I like to go with 030 layer height. Um, I turn off the skirt and um, I have four perimeter layers, four to five. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward um, and they print quite predictably. All right, um, I guess I will real quick, you can tune out now if you want, but for those of you that want to see how to print this uh, in resin in the Rayware software, I'll show you right quick. It's very, very similar. The biggest difference is that I'm actually going to flip the file upside down, okay? And the reason being is that um, I want the bridging to occur up higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the pro. I'm gonna come over to the keystone and I am not logged in. Let me see if I can log in right quick. 
Okay, so I logged in and I'm going to click this material. Oh, that's interesting. It should allow for 100 millimicron layer thickness. I killed the Midas. There we go. Uh, it was just stuck on that because it's not, that's why, because it only gives you the option for 100. And since 20 was visible, it just kind of got stuck there. So anyway, now I'm good to go. He's still splint, uh, he splint soft 100 microns. I'm going to come over to my files. I'm going to get out of the FDM files. I'm going to get into the resin files, find a large, drag and drop it in here. And I haven't even tested to see if this will fit. Um, I, I mean, I've had other people do it. I haven't printed because I don't have my printer at home. Hit, I'm going to go ahead and click on the file, click on the base right there. And now I'm going to hold this, hold the shift button, and I can rotate it and it fits right in there. I guess I knew it would, but um, the the problem is you only print one at a time. Now it's a seven minute print, whereas on an FDM printer it's about a 20 minute print. Uh, for this this particular file, so it's not a big deal, but you're going to be doing more printing, more exchanging out of you know of the prints. So it's 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 a little more labor intensive in that regard, plus washing it and whatnot. But again, notice I have the bridges on top, okay? Because you can bridge that in a FDM print. Um, it's only about a, just over a millimeter and a half. This just makes me a little bit more confident that you won't have all these holes over cured and filled in. So. Um, this is just the way we've tested it. It might work both ways, um, but I'm also, well, yeah, that's 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 the biggest thing. Um, I, I do think that, I hadn't thought about this, but I'm thinking about right now, if you printed this on the print bed, I do wonder how easy it would be to get these off of the actual print bed without them breaking as you're removing it. Um, just a thought, kind of throwing it out there off the cuff. But anyway, so now you know, there's, there's how to get these things printed. All right, thanks so much. Bye for now.